allow me also in the name of my colleague uh, Luis Moreno Campo to welcome you to this event. Um, our special welcome goes to our guest, Mr. Blatter, the former president of FIFA. I don't think I have to introduce him. He is the reason why you, why you are here. Um, you may ask yourself, though, why two specialists on combating corruption, Luis Moreno Campo, the former prosecutor of Argentina who was responsible to put dictators to prison, who then, as the prosecutor general of the International Criminal Court in The Hague, fought against very serious uh, um, uh, violations of human rights, and who is also a co-founder of Transparency International, why he and myself um, invited you to join us tonight to this event. Um, the reason is basically the people you probably don't know by name sitting in between the students and the students sitting in the first row here. We have spent an entire week together uh, 20 highly motivated and committed students analyzing the difficulties of sports governing bodies in general. And they have been working on a hands-on, very concrete concept for FIFA and how to bring FIFA forwards. Well, you would think, well, okay, that's not the first time somebody has been doing something on FIFA now. We'll hear more about that in a moment. It is new what has is come out this week, and I think I was myself very astonished what high quality, what you could do in merely one week of very intensive work, day and night, I must say, something really new has come out. And um, the recipient of this uh, new um, paper will be the new F FIFA president, Gianni Infantino, if he's interested in it. And I can assure you it's something really creative. I, um, I must congratulate our colleagues for their work. Now, we have considered, and this is a very essential point, we have considered it absolutely crucial that our colleagues get the full picture. We have been speaking at the beginning of the week with Domenico Scala. He was joining us in, the, um, in our uh, seminar. We, um, have invited um, not just an insider, but the ultimate insider who has been at the helm of FIFA over the last decades. And we would like to discuss with him what worked, what did not work, where he sees the challenges to go forwards from here, and I think we also maybe want to ask him what he would, different, what he would do differently if he had another chance. Um, obviously, we have our questions. The students certainly have questions, I know. And I'm sure you have questions. So let me quickly um, give you an idea what the procedures are for today, for these two hours. Um, my colleague, Luis Moreno Campo, will explain to you in just a moment why he has donated a week of his life to the University of Basel, why he has spent a week here with us um, to teach students in Switzerland. He has his own students at Harvard. He has uh, students in Buenos Aires. But why was he come to Basel and stay with us for an entire week? And then um, in, uh, I would invite our student delegation first on the podium to ask a few questions that came up during the week, um, setting the scene, getting us started, and then it would be Mr. Blatter's turn to answer those questions, to give his perspective. And then, of course, I would go back to the students and ask whether they're satisfied with what they've been hearing. And we have more students here who also would probably like to come in. Um, this means we are going to have probably a first hour more or less up here. And the second hour, that's your hour, we will go into the um, general public. And I would like to then hear your questions, your statements. Um, and um, we'll come to that when we, when we get there. Um, 
Lastly, if you don't want to speak English, you don't have to. Uh, you can, of course, speak German if you want. Sie können auch Deutsch sprechen, wenn Sie lieber wollen. Und Sie können sogar Baseldeutsch reden oder auch äh, Wallisdeutsch wird verstanden. Ähm, Luis, por favor. Uh, this week was a very, a very innovative educational experience happening in Basel University. 17 Basel University students were focused in studying how to reform FIFA. There was, there was a lot of information about scandals in FIFA, systemic corruption in FIFA, but there's not so much information what the problems ahead. Example. There's a new president in FIFA, Mr. Infantino. And it's a new reform in FIFA. Mr. Infantino has less power as a president than Mr. Blatter had as a president. Because now, the Secretary General of FIFA has, it's like a CEO. It's really the person who runs the organization. It's a change. However, it's not clear how this new Secretary General will be appointed. Mr. Levantino has discretion to choose a friend, a cousin, and appoint a secretary general, or could request a professional company to do a very good selection and propose to FIFA appoint someone who is important experience in managing big companies. So, there's new things that will happen in the coming weeks. And that is the idea in, the, in this uh, course. These students are following now in detail what happened. And they know the facts. They know the scandal. They know the cases. But also they understood how we can keep following that. I am interested in that because as a chief prosecutor of the International Criminal, Criminal Court, I saw the problem we have. We have a global information but they are, except the International Criminal Court, this is no global organization monitoring or enforcing the global information. Panama Papers are a good example. So you have global information, but the outcome or, or the impact of the Panama Papers will depend how the local people react. In Iceland, the Prime Minister resigned. In Ukraine, I don't know what happened. In, in, in UK, big discussions. In Argentina, big discussions. So in each country, there's a different reaction. And that is the world in which we are living today. A world where you have global information, but no global institutions to protecting us or to controlling football. And in this way, this idea of Basel University to engage its students in this process of monitoring FIFA it's a very innovative and good idea. That's why I'm here supporting it. And I hope we can keep doing that. Next year, we should sit again together, maybe also invite Mr. Infantino, and review what happened last year. <laughs> keep, keep moving this. Because this way, Basel, which is very well situated and have Marpeth, could make a contribution, not just to Switzerland, to the world. That we're here. <coughs> Let me explain in summarize the, the, the findings of this uh, week. The, the students found there are a couple of issues which are, which are problematic in FIFA. One is the marketing, selling the marketing rights. As you know, there are scandals connected with companies associated with FIFA or people in FIFA. But in particular, the most in deep, deep uh, investigation is the FBI investigation. The FBI investigation, the US, the American investigation, presented as a FIFA problem, but in fact, it's basically an investigation on the leaders of the Caribbean and South America who are basically trading, receiving bribes to offer the marketing rights. And interestingly, many of them were also members of the executive committee of FIFA. That's the problem. FIFA is not just a global organization. It's organized and in some way um, managed by the regional organizations. So 
fixing FIFA will not be enough. We have to put an eye what happened in Comebol, what happened in South America. In South America, the information show that they have 10 national federations. Nine of them received bribes in, in the marketing business. Argentina and Brazil, three million each of them, because they are the biggest federations, and the others, 1.5. Just one of them, I don't know whom, did not receive the bribes. So nine of 10 received the bribes. And they are in the executive committee. In fact, the Argentinian person was the vice president of the FIFA for many years. So it's not just FIFA I have to follow. We have to follow how the regional organizations work. Because if they are not changing themselves, that will impact in FIFA. And another aspect of this, uh, the Panama Papers show that the UEFA signed a contract with one of the companies who was involved in the bribing scheme in South America. So it's not just the leaders of Conmebol or UEFA. The companies involved are doing business in different places, including in Europe. So a company who was paying bribes in South America is doing business with UEFA. And Mr. Infantino was the lawyer reviewing that. So probably he had no idea what happened, but the connection is there. So Mr. Infantino had to open an eye to see, can we stop these companies who were doing illegal business in South America or in Caribe to do business in the rest of the world? That's something we have to talk. We have to keep following. That's why, again, we are not doing here investigation of cases. We are trying to understand how to transform the organization of the football. And the other aspect that we discussed and probably a student will make questions about this. I probably know, I know the question, so we're working on the question, so they will do questions about this. Is the hosting, the selection of where the, the, the World Cup will be. That, in fact, trigger the, the reform of FIFA. In particular, there was one newspaper who was doing a, a, a sting operation against two members of the executive committee who they, they accepted bribes to select, but then the biggest scandal was the Qatar and Russia adjudication. That was the biggest scandal that triggered uproar. But in fact, it's interesting that then in the FBI investigations, the allegation that South Africa pay a bribe to the Caribbean guys to have, to have the cap in South Africa, and in fact, opened the discussion on Germany. That Germany allegedly uh, received money from Adidas to or the, one of the the president of Adidas <coughs> give money to a company connected with the head of the Asian Federations. And then, apparently, the German Federation decided to give the money back to Adidas president. And the money went through FIFA. So all this happening, and I know there's still investigation in Germany, should be clarified. The issue is, is the, the feeling we have is that um, the selections of the countries who made the, who organized the, the, the World Cup is include political favors and include probably money transfer. Now there are new rules. There are something you have to know. The, in, the, in, this, in the last month, and in particular, a push by Domenico Scala, who is there in some way because of reform that Marpid was leading, uh, the new rules are that um, the plenary of the FIFA, not the executive committee, the plenary of the FIFA, will vote to decide the seat of the tournament. So there are new rules. No rules uh, are enough guarantee to ensure that we have a great system. But it's true that in this convoluted and complicated process, FIFA was evolving. FIFA is now much more in accord with international standards, OK? So this was the issue we discussed in the seminar. And the idea now is the students will present to Mr. Blatter a few questions. And Mr. Blatter will have a, a time to, to answer. Maybe you explain better than me, no? This. It's, very, it's very simple. I was just going to suggest um, um, that we have four students. We're going to hear four questions. And then we're going to invite Mr. Blatter to um, pick them up. You see the names of our students. If I start on the far end, Thomas Meyer. Then we have Larissa Wies. And then we have Julia Schneider. And then we have Fernando Tafur. 
and they will get us started. They will basically pick up some of the points that you have mentioned, and we'll come back to those points as the discussion goes on. Yeah. So, starting with, um, with Mr. Meyer, please. Yes, um, my question to you, Mr. Blatter, is about the hosting issue. Um, you made a statement last October where you said that uh, FIFA agreed to go to Russia for the 2018 World Cup and then back to the Americas for the 2022 World Cup. And I would like to know how that it is possible to make such an agreement before the vote has been held. I would suggest we'll take all the four questions and then um, give Mr. Blatter the, the floor for the, uh, for the answer. Um, this means we come to Larissa Wies, please. So, Mr. Blatter, as you know, in World Cup hosting contracts up until now, FIFA has demanded that countries amend their laws and regulations in order to meet the requirements of sponsors. Some of these laws were also for the protection of workers. Why did FIFA change labor laws at the expense of these workers instead of demanding higher standards for them? So we have two questions on hosting, and we would now come to... Um, Julia Meyer, uh, Julia Schneider, sorry. Yeah. Um, Mr. Blatter, I have a question regarding the issue Professor Ocampo just raised. How was FIFA involved in the payment of the 6.7 million euros from the DFB? Why was this FIFA business? And finally, uh, Fernando Tafur. Mr. Blatter, the FBI investigation showed that the CONCACAF and COMEBOL leaders and former FIFA executive members were accepting bribes in the regions. Do we have to assume that they were doing the same in the FIFA? Thank you very much. Now, it's up to you. Probably it's best if you come here to, uh, to, to talk to us. That As you wish. You can stay there if you like. <laughs> Unless you want to stay here. No, no, I you. would like to go. Very good. All of you. Yeah, merci. Okay. For me, to be with you this afternoon is not a task. For me, it is an opportunity to answer your questions. Anyway, um, when we are in the city of Basel, uh, there is something which is not exactly according what we say fair play. But I don't know what happened here. But I repeat, it's not a task for me. It is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to clarify some of the questions I have just received now. Uh, to clarify also all the other questions uh, you would uh, I'd be happy to, uh, to put on the table. But first of all, let me tell you that when I got the invitation by uh, Professor Mark Piet, uh, I was happy to say, yes, I'm coming. I was just consulting if this is a football match, because I'm still suspended to go into football activities. So we don't speak so much about uh, penalties and extra times and so on, in order that I respect uh, the uh, the shameful suspension that they have imposed to the FIFA president, to the past FIFA president. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well having said that, having said that, um, Mark Piet, thank you. Thank you, but I add something. You have said to the assembly here that um, uh, perhaps you are surprised that uh, two 
personalities, big personalities, he, uh, Professor uh, Moreno Campo and uh, Campo and uh, Mr. Piet, uh, they are fighting con uh, corruption. But we are three. I am fighting corruption as well. And I will tell you how we did it, how to try to fight corruption, and how our efforts to fight corruption was then stopped. And this gives me the opportunity to say, thank you, Professor Ocampo. And why? Because you have already touched one item, which is a very important item, and it is the activities of confederations or presidents of national associations in confederations and not in FIFA activities, the Americans. That's very important. But I come back now to the questions. And then I will deliver a long speech. Wer sollte dich einfach schämen? Aber ehrlich, shame on you, wirklich. Not for me, for you, I'm sorry. They are not coming for you, they are coming for me. Fair play. Hey, das geht's doch nicht. Come on. Monsieur Meyer, Major, the question about the 2010 decision on two World Cups. There are two reasons, or three reasons, why we have taken the decision to decide on two World Cups. The first one was to give and this is really taught in uh, economy, to give to our partners, the media partners, television, to give more time for preparation of their work together with FIFA and the football, to have a decision made on two World Cups. And on this 2nd of December, in 2010, we made the decision for the World Cups 218 and 222. The second reason was why we have chosen these countries, or not chosen these countries, what we wanted to do, is that we wanted to have, and we have done it, a rotation of the World Cup. The World Cup was only organized in Europe and in the Americas, North and South, until the decision was taken that we have to go to Asia. And we have the World Cup in 2002 organized in two countries, in the Republic of Korea and Japan. It was a nightmare to organize a World Cup in two countries. That was another decision taken in the future. If one country alone can do it, we should not uh, combine two countries. And the third reason which was behind that we should, in this rotation of the World Cup, every third time the World Cup shall come back to Europe. So if you had a look on Europe, you will have seen that France and Germany, they have had the World Cup twice. The World Cup was also in Spain, the World Cup was in England, the World Cup was in Sweden, the World Cup was even in Switzerland, but never the World Cup was in the eastern part of Europe. And so therefore, it was, it was not a decision, not a decision, it was a movement to say it would be good 
if the World Cup 2018 could go to Russia. Then we had the World Cup for 2022. In the rotation of the World Cup, in 2022, the World Cup should go to CONCACAF, which is North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. And there was, from this region, only one candidate. This was USA. The other candidates came all from the Asian region, including Australia, because they are part of Asian Confederation. And the others were, were um, um, Qatar, Japan, and the Republic of Korea. And then it was said, OK, it would be good to go to the Americas. And why? This was the third part. We were just starting in the World Cup 2010 in Africa. We were just starting the so-called handshake for peace that we started together with the Peace Nobel uh, Peace Institute in uh, Oslo, and which is still going on a little bit, but it has been stopped since I'm not any longer at the helm of FIFA. But it's not giving this handshake, but the handshake, if you see now the players, what they do. And this would have been something absolutely exceptional, exceptional, if we would have had in the, this disturbed world we are living now, on one side Russia, and the other side the United States. This was the idea behind this 2nd of December, but uh, in 2010. But I've, as I have already said, World Cups are not only decided by the people in FIFA, in this case was the executive committee, World Cup are decided mostly on recommendation, for not using the word pressure, recommendation of the different governments. And if you remember who has been on this 2nd December in Zurich uh, for the attribution of the World Cup, it was a small security council that was present there. Because it is so important. And what has changed, changed in the last moment? In the last moment has changed a dinner party or a lunch in the Elysee Palais in Paris. And the recommendation made uh, to one of the voters, he accepted that he has received this uh, information, Michel Platini. And then, at a sudden, we were in the situation where the World Cup went to Qatar and not to the United States. But to give, there was no decision. There was a kind of consensus we do it. There was no decision, not written down, nothing. But it was the way to, to, to go. Now, when we are in Qatar, we come to the second question. I'm sorry, I'm taking my glass here. You see. No, no, this is to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we come to the second question. The workers. You are absolutely right. It's a shame. It is a shame. It is a shame. For the next World Cup, um, naturally, this is in the, in the, it's late, but better late than never. This is a big part of the papers, which have already been accepted. By the way, the next World Cup will be decided by the Congress of FIFA, not by the Executive Committee. And we have started, just today, they started to push me out of FIFA uh, with uh, a high level professor, also from the Boston University. It's not you. It's <laughs> and uh, to start with human rights in FIFA and to defend the human rights. And uh, this item is still there. 
and uh, what happened with the workers. But there is one thing I have to defend the construction of the stadia. It's not the construction of the stadia, which is the big responsible for that. It's the reconstruction or a new construction of the whole country. Because indeed, there's only a small part of the workers they are in the stadia. But it's not so important to say that Deutsche Bahnen machen das ganze Bahnsystem. Das gibt uh, keine großen Schlagzeilen. Aber FIFA, Football, das gibt dann die Headlines. Aber Sie haben recht, you are right. It's not correct. And uh, we can only hope that uh, now it will, be, it will be improved. The third question. DFB. DFB. Deutscher Fußballbund. <laughs> now really, the biggest... Deutschland sagt das selber, wir sind der größte Sportverband der Welt. Und wenn der größte Sportverband der Welt nicht imstande ist, seine eigenen Probleme intern zu lösen, dann stimmt doch etwas nicht mehr. Ganz ehrlich gesagt, I say it in English. Die Deutsche Fußballbund, they say they are the biggest sports organization, the Fußball, the biggest sports organization. If they are not able to solve their problems internally, Listen, and then they give, they give a mandate to, uh, to a company outside of the football, and they tell them, please, make us a report. And they forgot to say, but this report is confidential for us. And then this report was published. So now it is on the, c'est sur la rue publique, everybody knows what has happened. If you ask me what has happened with this money, I don't know. I, I was the president at that time. The only thing what I can tell you is that never, never you have to pay something to FIFA to obtain the World Cup. Definitely not. This I am guaranteed. And the money which they are speaking uh, about that, they wanted, they wanted to have an uh, opening ceremony like in the Olympic Games because the opening match was in Munich, and they wanted to have an opening ceremony in Berlin. And then they contracted, I think it's an Austrian Künstler, Künstler aus Wien, or Kärnten, weiß nicht woher, and uh, they wanted to start something, and they have seen it will not work for football. The football people, they don't want to see an opening, they want to see a match, a football match. That's all what I can say there. I have been asked uh, to help them, uh, but in my actual situation, still suspended. Mm, no, very no, no. politically correct. <laughs> no, uh, suspended, so I cannot do it. Um, the last one was the question on just on the FBI investigation if they were also corrupt in the FIFA? The uh, yeah, this was the, 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 the problem. I think it's the yeah. responsibility uh, of FIFA for the confederations and associations. Oh, yeah, that's what Mr. Yeah. Ocampo has just touched before. Exactly. Just for your information, all those people, they have been arrested in Zurich or in other countries are Americans. Americans from the southern part of America or from the northern part of America. For the time being, I said, there's no European, no African, no Asian, no Oceanian, only Americans. And the activity, activities of these people, the major activity which they have been now accused for bribery is the activities they have had in connection with the confederations. For that, I have to tell you that FIFA is organized with 209 associations. They are directly members of FIFA. And they elect the president of FIFA. But they don't elect the government of FIFA. 
my government that I have had is not elected by the same entity I am elected. They are elected by the different confederations. These are South America, North America, Asia, Africa, Europe, and Oceania. They elect them. I come back to that later in my, my, uh, my remarks. I have no influence on them. And I have no influence on the activities, what they are doing in their confederation. And with this uh, corruption and bribery going around in North and South America, it was merely in connection with the 2016, now, 100th anniversary of uh, the Copa America. And this is not in connection with activities of FIFA. In the Congress where I've been uh, re-elected on the 29th of May last year, I think it was yesterday, yeah, sure, the time is, is flying, I have said at the end of the Congress, I will, because it was just after this uh, raid of the American and Swiss police in a five-star hotel in Zurich, they liked it, I mean the hotel, and the, 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 uh, I said, I take responsibility for what has happened, but I have to share the responsibility. You were there, not you, but this was my committee was there. I was speaking here, they were there. But I have to share it with this committee. But at a sudden, this committee were then demantled, and uh, now the committee is practically new. So just to say, I take responsibility, but inside the FIFA, inside the FIFA with the national associations, we have put a lot of, uh, uh, let, let's say, uh, uh, barriers to stop, to stop uh, the uh, corruption, to stop bribery, but if it does not go down even such a high considered professor like Mark Pitt uh, cannot um, make sure that the decision taken by the FIFA is then going down to the confederations or then to the national associations to answering your question, sir. Sorry. And uh, if I tell you that the UFR still not, don't have an ethics committee. UFR still not have an ethics committee. The IOC has a so-called ethics committee, but decisions are making by the executive board and not by this committee. So we are the only one in the sport, we have one, but with one committee we cannot control 300 million active participants in our game and less the 1.6 billion. Voila. Thank you very much. You've made a really a valiant effort to answer those questions. Some of them were difficult, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I think the, the, the first answer to the double World Cup was really interesting because you gave us a juice, some juicy details there on Sarkozy. Um, the, I'm not sure on the second one whether um, our colleague has got an answer yet. I'll give, go back to the table in a moment. You all know that yesterday um, the person you mentioned, uh, Mr. Ruggie, Professor Ruggie from Harvard came out with his suggestions. And if I understood it well, he's basically saying, okay, give Qatar another year. If they don't get their act together, take away the, the World Cup. Now, I think that's something one probably has to go into a little more. The third question, that was interesting, wasn't it? Um, you basically said, Deutsche Fußballbund, it's a mess. Yeah. No, they, no, no, they, they, um, no, maybe they are I'm, too strong. But, but, uh, maybe it's that too strong, I'll come back. Right. The last point, um, they, by the way, they have had their um, Bundestag, Fußball Bundestag today, this morning, and have elected a new president. So it's very timely what we're doing here. The, the fourth question was really a very big question. The responsibility 
of FIFA for its subsidiary bodies, like confederations, that's the regional bodies, and then the associations, those are the countries and territories. And I think you rightly said there, I don't have the, or I did not in my role, have the control over them. The question obviously I think that is Im implied in your question is, well, shouldn't you have, or shouldn't the, pre the not necessarily the president alone, but shouldn't FIFA have a control? And the students actually came up with a series of sanctions in the case that the, su the subsidiary bodies were not able to reform and to actually be relatively tough on them, we could come back to that. So can I just briefly ask our, our members on the panel um, whether you're satisfied, this time maybe starting with Mr. Tafur. I have a follow-up question. Uh, one of the bribery schemes in this FBI investigation involved the host election of the 2010 World Cup. Mr. Blazer confessed that he accepted bribes from the South Africans in exchange for his vote. Do you have in this case a responsibility? No, the, the, shall, uh, shall we take them all or do you want to di directly respond? What is, if, maybe it would be good if we heard all your additional questions. So I, I, I can answer to, to oh, him please, because this, please, is a, this is a general question. I cannot be responsible, morally responsible for people. They even have not been elected by the same body I have been elected, but they definitely I am not responsible for them. And if you say, if you know it, I know it later, and then we had our, our committee, we had our, uh, um, how it's called, uh, the, the ethics committee, we had, thanks to, to, to Mr. Piet, we had this committee. But it is impossible, it's like we are organized, we are organized in FIFA, it's, uh, it's like a state. Our organization is not any longer only an association uh, with, uh, which is in the Civil Rights uh, Book of uh, Switzerland. Uh, we, are a, uh, we are organized like a state. We have a, a Congress, which is the Parliament. Uh, the Parliament elects only the President and, and not the executive or the, the committee, which is the government. So I am in a, in a position uh, uh, which is a position that can happen also in political organization when president and government are not together. Ça s'appelle en français la con, con, comment on dit? Cohabitation. La cohabitation en français. They have to, to be together. They have to be together. But we have also elected in FIFA the jurisdictional bodies, which are the Ethics Committee, the uh, Committee, the Disciplinary Committee, the Committee of Appeal of FIFA, we have also the Audit and Compliance Committee, they are all independent. But these committees must also be organized in the pyramid of FIFA. If they still stay in FIFA, it will not work. It will not work. Can I ask you something? This morning, our colleagues presented a very far-reaching concept. They were saying, you're right, um, this is the status pre, the status ante. But they were asking for, actually, confederations, they were thinking of Comnebol, to follow the same rules as FIFA is now doing, and saying, well, FIFA will cut the money that Comebol is getting if they don't do it in a certain time frame. The problem is that now 26 people are indicted, and most of them, most of the Latin Americans, I think uh, Luis mentioned, was it nine out of 10 are, of the association heads are actually indicted in the US. So the, the students have said, okay, 
Follow the, the new example of FIFA. If you don't do it, FIFA stops paying. They will not get anything, and it's going to be worse. Suspending voting rights in FIFA if they don't go along with it. And the last one, excluding associations from FIFA or from the World Cup if they don't do it. That sounds that's very, very radical, but I don't no, know. No, but that's, that's, that, that's the only sanction that FIFA has. It is to suspend an association, but we cannot, according to the statute, suspend a confederation. We cannot. Mm -hmm. FIFA cannot suspend UEFA because they don't have any, any uh, um, they uh, are not ethics members committee. Of FIFA. Because, mm -hmm. because, and now the change they have made in, in FIFA and they have accepted. They still don't have, uh, they still don't have the election of the members uh, by the, the Congress. They are still elected by the different uh, confederations. And, and here, we, here we are. I am very happy for you and for, uh, for the Gianni Infantino. By the way, he is a countryman of, of, of me. He is in, from the Valley. He's from Brig. I'm from FISP. We are about eight kilometers different. <laughs> <laughs> he was also a good football player. <laughs> <laughs> But his team just lost against FISP. So, <laughs> now, no, but uh, you prepare a paper for him. He has prepared a paper for me, this uh, yeah. professor. Yeah. And we went with this paper. We went through with this paper. But there were still two or three matters. And one of the matters which have never went through was the integrate, integrity check of the members. This was a very important part. Mm -hmm. The rest, the election. But he is happy now. He, well, kn he knows it already, or I can phone him later. Can I throw in a thought? But then I'll go, we'll go back to the table immediately. Integrity check. Also, something very interesting happened just this week. On Wednesday, the first person who should have become an, a member of the executive committee was banned by the new body to check on them because he was considered... Uh, not suitable. There is a case running against him in the Ethics Committee, and he would probably be blocked in a matter of one or two months. So one thought it wouldn't be a good sign to have this person join uh, at this very po at this point. So you see, all, all those topics that the students have raised, things are moving very fast. But very quickly, um, the, uh, I think we've dealt with your, with your topic, but are you satisfied? Now, human rights, what about it? Um, I think we all agree that human rights violations were, um, as you put it, a shame. Um, but they didn't just surface yesterday. So my question is, why wasn't action taken years ago when the first allegations started? Why didn't you intervene earlier? That was a bit the, I, I think I understand the, the question in Qatar. Why do you need Ruggie to say now, in a year, you'll take away the World Cup, which is going to be very difficult? Why didn't you do that like four years ago? But first of all, it's not me that I have said uh, that we take it away, uh, the World Cup, uh, from now in one year, if they don't do it. But uh, this Professor Rocky that I contacted personally and who is coming to FIFA on my initiative, now he's working on that. The, the problem is that the executive committee who has decided uh, to go to, uh, to uh, um, uh, Qatar in two different, uh, afterwards in two different dates, has, has reconfirmed that we go to Qatar, but we have to have a better look on uh, this uh, uh, working system, on the, the, the way how they treat workers. Uh, there are committees, commissions, and uh, visitors, uh, political and from everywhere, but definitely, uh, it does not give the right answer, but you have always also to listen what my grandmother told me when I was a little boy and when I was speaking to her by saying, oh, this is a bad man, this is a bad man. She said, listen, if you are looking, when you, when you uh, her in the, in the church, when there must be and dong. So you always have to listen. Who says ding and who says dong on the other side. And here, uh, as also in the case of FIFA in general, after the attack 
of, on the, from the 27th of May. It was only one way where the press went. Wow! We go to FIFA, we go to the FIFA president, this is corruption totally. Just in brackets, I am suspended by the Ethics Committee of FIFA and the Board of Appeal has confirmed that both of these organizations, they have said, there is no bribery and no corruption. They said that, this is in the, in, in the decision. Can we just have a check with Mr. Meyer? Are you satisfied? Um, I would like to pick up the point that you said World Cups are being decided by recommendations of governments, and you said that uh, once Sarkozy decided to support Qatar, it changed all pattern. Now, on the other hand, we had Mr. Cameron, who was uh, against the bid of Qatar, so uh, why and how do you think that uh, Sarkozy has, has won? Aha. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, mathematically it is easy why Qatar has won. Because with uh, the intervention, the recommendation, I say recommendation, I will not attack politicians, they do what they have to do. But with the recommendation, and Mr. Platini has accepted that. He said, I voted. But he brought with him some other colleagues who were in his package. And this was four votes which have changed finally, four votes. And if you change the final vote, then USA would win with 12 to 10. Because there were only 22 voters at that time. And that's why I say, and in the past, when I was in the, the different World Cup, i tell you one thing about the attribution of the World Cup 2006 in Germany. There was, there were 24, 24. At the end, it came out that will be uh, 24, 12 against 12. According to the, uh, the, the ballots which we're going through, and then at a sudden, before the last ballot started, the representative of Oceania, he was the president of Oceania, from uh, New Zealand, Mr. Dempsey, he asked for the floor, and I said, yes, sir. And he said, ah, I, I don't know what I have to do. They say one say here, the one say other. He took his hand back, and he left. And he left, that's true, and we were, 12, we were at the end 12 against 11. I was happy because would we have been 12 against 12? According to the statutes at that time, I should have taken, the, the, I, mm -hmm. I was the, the man who should have taken the decision. 12 against 12. Thank you very much. Now, we have one hour left, sort of. I would suggest <clears throat> two more questions by students and then we'll go into the general public. Um, I would like to ask uh, uh, two students in the first row here whether you would like to come in. Um, anybody would like to, would like to uh, throw in a question at this stage? If you could stand up and uh, present yourself and then ask your question. So um, the FIFA, since you are president, the FIFA became bigger and bigger and made a huge amount of money and never, you never uh, changed their structure. So why you came up so late with the reform? And why exactly in 2011? Do you want to respond directly? Yes, I also? think. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just uh, uh, yeah. respond to this question. By the way, we have started before to have a, a, a ethics committee of FIFA already in 2005 and 2006, and the first uh, chairman of our ethics committee uh, was um, the actual president of the International Athletics Federation, Lord Coe, he was the first one. And, uh, then, uh, and then we had uh, uh, another president uh, in the ethics committee who started to suspend uh, members. That's why on the 2nd of December in 2012, we had only 22 members who were suspended. There was a Swiss lawyer, 
Um, and Claudio Sulzer. Uh, Claudio Sulzer. Claudio Sulzer, number nine uh, of the Swiss national team. And, uh, and then came the 2011. And the 2011 Congress, I started this Congress by saying that we must go into a reform. What is a reform? A reform means that you make important and radical changes for the better, not for, not the, be for the better. In all languages, this is the definition. To make radical, important changes for the better. And we came out of the Congress, at the end of the Congress, I made an, uh, already a decision. The World Cup will be played, will be decided by the Exco, uh, by the uh, Congress, and one one woman in FIFA, and the third one was then this Ethics Committee. And we have said we will have una comisión de soluciones, an, uh, a, a committee for solutions. We have numerated a lot of problems which were in FIFA. And then I was asked by the executive committee uh, to look at the right man who could help us. And with connections, uh, I found, finally, uh, Professor Piet. I remember when he was introduced to me, the guy, a good guy, he said, uh, this is Professor Piet. What, what do you want from me, he said. I said, you can go now, the professor is here, I'm going to speak with him. And uh, together we started a whole list, <laughs> a whole list of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and in this list, there has been absolutely outstanding reforms which were made, but the, the reforms that were not made were the integrity check, the election of the members of the executive committee through the, the FIFA Congress. There were others which were not made, the duration of the mandate, the age limit, and so on. But these two are the most essential. And these two are now in, but the integrity check has no regress to those they are already in. So they are in, they are not touched. <laughs> And uh, uh, I, I think that there should have been a little bit, a little bit more. You say, why so late? You know, FIFA, we started by zero. And when I was president, even minus zero. And then FIFA become a big, a big company. And uh, in this big company, uh, we have realized that it's not so easy uh, to control this millions and millions of people they are in. If you are on the field of play, you have the boundaries of uh, the field of play, you have a limit, you have a limit of time, and you have a referee. But if you are not any longer on the field of play, and you don't play every day, the three, three million people, they are not, 300 million people, they are not playing every day, and 1.6 million less, if they are in the in the air, no referee, no time limit, and uh, no uh, limitations. And this is the problem that we have. Uh, perhaps it was late, but if we would have been able to go through all the proposals which was made by Mr. Piet, he knows who, which organization they stopped it. The organization inside FIFA they stopped. But it's not my, my theme now to say. I have a different role at the moment. I'm the guardian of time. And we have now come to the moment where we are going to open to the wider arena, if you want. And I would like to ask for three questions, and then we'll go back to the podium. And you are the first person, and you're the second person, and you're the third. And then we will come back, and we'll be very short in answering, and you'll be very short in asking your questions, please. It's your start, and you can choose the language if you prefer German or 
oder Baseldeutsch. Jetzt. Nice to meet you, Mr. Josef Platter. I have the following question. What do you think about um, starting uh, in, inside of FIVA with a better system of self-control instead of FBI investigations? And uh, if you want to apply for a reduction of your punishment from six to two years, which will be soon finished, and what do you want to do in future if you want to become president of another company? <laughs> Thank you. We'll take the second question over here. Okay. Um, my name is Dennis West. I would like to ask you... You have to speak louder. I would like to ask you, because you mentioned that uh, um, FIFA is like a state and you have a government, would it be a good idea to have uh, something like a uh, interest, public interest in every information and everything that happens in, in FIFA and that you establish in FIFA something called like a principle of publicity so that you actually um, publish every protocol, everything that happens, full transparency. And if that doesn't, if it isn't possible... So full openness. Full openness. Thank you. Possible. The third uh, <laughs> point is over here. Yep, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my question regards the use of technology in football and whereas this could prevent uh, corruption off the pitch that goes from the pitch to off the pitch. So why is technology not being implemented in games? Thank you. I, I'm sorry, I'm not so sure if it's a question of age or, or a question of uh, this is kind of Hörsaal, or this is a Hörsaal. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, sometimes I have uh, difficulties uh, to understand, not, not, not to understand. I understand what you ask but I cannot listen what you say, so it's a difference. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It, 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 it is okay. It is okay. Uh, listen, um, uh, the concerning your question when you say about also the, the FBI, the problem is that, and this goes into the third question, which was, which was here. Uh, the, the, the problem is that... Uh, if you don't, if you are not able uh, to clean in your house and uh, there are uh, activities which are in criminal law, then uh, definitely, definitely somebody else has to come in. But I repeat, uh, this uh, uh, FBI and American justice intervention which I cannot, um, let's say, make a comment on that because I'm involved in all that. But it came, it came through the Americas, through activities in America. Um, <laughs> uh, I am not going into politics. I will. Uh, you, you ask me if I want to be one day president somewhere. Yes. Yeah, okay. No, no, I am a, 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 I'm still a president. I am a president of uh, a very small society in FISP, in my home village, uh, which is linked with the number nine. Um, it's uh, all the players, they have uh, been wearing number nine, and we invited uh, Uwe Seller to do the same, and he has the same age that I have. But he scored less goals than I scored, but on a higher level. <laughs> No, no, I'm, uh, I'm not afraid of that. Contrary, then I have said, I have said, um, uh, we should not be any longer only an organization in the Swiss civil law, because we should change the structure of FIFA. We should put it in a professional structure, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then you say no, no. Otherwise, if we have the same structure and to take people from outside or public or whatever in, I think this is not, a, we should have the courage, but this has been presented to the Congress. They don't want that because then we have the laws of the obligation rights in Switzerland, and this is not the same that the civil rights. 
This is the, the one question. And the third one, where was the third one? I think you have some difficulties understanding. Maybe if you could once more um, just very, in one sentence say what the gist of your question was. So would the use of technology uh, prevent the spread of corruption from the pitch to outside, for example, with ma uh, match fixing and everything related to it. So why is technology not being used in, in for the games today if it could simplify uh, how things work? That's what the end of match is. Yeah, fixing. Now we are in football. Uh, we are in football. Um, uh, let's say in match fixing, we are responsible, but we have seen that we are not the only one which are in this, uh, in this case. Uh, and specifically, it is easier uh, to go into individual sports. But um, there are two cases where we, are, we have not been with our disciplinary committees. We have not been uh, strong enough. It was with match fixing and it was with racism. And with racism, we haven't had the courage so far. Any committee of any association, not to suspend the, uh, let's say, that the people cannot come to stadia to play in, on empty stadia. Just deduct points or eliminate the team in a cup competition and then it will stop immediately. And nobody has made it, nobody. They don't have the courage to do so. If you, if you have uh, racism in a game, then eliminate this uh, club or this national association from the competition for one year, and then it will, it will end. Um, doping, <coughs> doping. All the villains in uh, football, all the villains in our society, you find them in FIFA, because 1.6 Billion people are, are therein. So fight them. Who can fight them? I tried, not alone, and I have to say that I was not totally successful. The only thing I was successful that everywhere in the world football is played, organized football is played. All national associations have a house of football, have a technical center, they have playing pitches, they have courses. And somebody said today about money, uh, to, to don't give money. You said that. Somebody said that you should not give money uh, when they are not uh, doing well. <clears throat> yeah, you said that. Somebody said today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, it doesn't matter, but, but if, if you don't give money to the confederations, okay, but if you don't give money to the national association, 150 national associations could not exist without the financial help of FIFA. That's it. And football, football is a school of life. But they could and have school good of governance, life. couldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. We have several other people who, and you're in very heavy de demand. There is a request for the floor right at the back of the room, and then we'll come down here. First, it's you. And if you could present yourself, please. Yeah. I'm from the Marxist Society, Uni Basel, and I'm trying to hold a short intervention. Thank you. Um, money laundering, corruption, bribery, Sepp Blatter's time in office as FIFA president has been riddled by scandals, which have not been resolved until today, though his involvement is no secret. There is no end in sight. His successor, Gianni Infantino, is just as corrupt. He's mentioned in the Panama Papers and is known to have been dealing with offshore companies. In 2022, an estimated 7,000 construction workers will have died from work accidents in Qatar while building the World Cup stadium. The working conditions are abysmal. The ma workers are massively exploited. FIFA and other so-called charitable sports associations are protected by the bourgeois state on their hunt for profits. In Switzerland, 65 international sports associations benefit from massive tax cuts, and in Lausanne, they don't have to pay rent for the first two years. And now the former king of this mess of exploitation and extortion 
and corruption is granted a platform by the university and is paid good money to hold this sad excuse of a speech. A joke, really. It's probably This is what you get when you me, mix capitalism with football. Unadulted, systematic corruption and supported by the bourgeois state. We demand full transparency of the FIFA finances, expropriations of all bribe money and all money taken from dictators, a transformation of the FIFA into a public organization, no cooperation of the university with criminals and bringing back football to the people. Thank you very much. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Again, we'll take three questions, and there's a third question over there. No, but they, 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 okay. Just a moment. I would One like thing at to, a time. to build the bridge between the statement before, and of course, we all agree that you have done a lot for football in the world, just as you said, and football is a school for life. But the other thing, as you said, that we can fight racism, racism if we really decide that wherever racism happens in a game, we just exclude. Mm -hmm. And the same you can do with corruption. I don't know too much about the legal framework, but you are under the Swiss civil right. So I'm, I imagine you must have a legal way to say, if a country does not uh, manage to get uh, in charge of the corruption inside the confederation, then they are excluded or they don't get the money. So this is a question of will. And of course it's very complicated, but there has to be this decision because otherwise you're always yourself um, subject to corruption, because you can always say we cannot bring this school mm. of life to the world. Uh, we lose our chance to build a better world by schooling wherever. But if you promise or if you allow corruption under that goal, you are not building a better world, but a world. Thank you very much. Lady. Thank you. So maybe... Um, very short third question here, a third, a third statement, please. Yeah. Yeah. Sanotelli, I'm um, as a manager. I want I have read a lot of, of FIFA in a billions at the magazine, the finance magazine. What I still cannot understand is why one of your uh, family members in the wider family, uh, Mr. Philip Blatter, could in any case be involved with in front sport marketing whereas the link is with FIFA to give any rights to such a company. I think good corporate governance should clearly forbid that any deal is done with, with people related to a decision taker or a person who has responsibility in such a big company. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we've got a very general um, uh, approach and the rules that we are um, applying here are obvious hard aber fair. It's hard talk if you want. It's tough. And I think one should address these issues because they are in the air. Uh, we're not insulting people, but we, we are addressing, people, uh, addressing matters. And I think you're uh, uh, raising the same kind of questions, just in a more specific manner. But um, I think it would be good if we could answer these questions. No. The, the, the gentleman up there who says, uh, let uh, the uh, footballers to football, if you have followed in the last uh, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, the football on the international level, you will have seen that football is for the footballers. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, what, uh, what you are saying goes into the criminal law, and I do not answer to such uh, accusations. I just want to say there that both of the committees, the committee uh, of the ethics of FIFA and the committee, the appeal committee, have taken out in the case where I'm suspended, they say there is no bribery and there is no corruption with the president of FIFA. And this is documented, they are documented. I don't enter into the other details uh, because I am a fighter, but I am a fighter for the good cause. That's why I answer you, lady. Uh, I answer you because what you say is absolutely correct. Uh, when, you, uh, uh, when you say that all those in corruption should also be suspended, with, uh, with the, uh, the um, racism, we are totally 100% together. We, the, the team, they have made the decision on the, 20, on the 2nd of December 
2010, there were 22 members. Out of these 22 members, only seven are still in FIFA. All the others have been suspended or they have been brought, uh, they left FIFA before being suspended. But later they have been suspended by FIFA, just to say that. And uh, to, uh, to you gentlemen here, uh, um, concerning marketing and all these, uh, uh, this, um, uh, you, you see the, when you look at the FIFA today, or football today, it is an exceptional, important part of the world economy, definitely. And when you see now what Asia, and especially China, will do now in football, again, they want to be a, a, big, a big company. The, the, problem, the problem is uh, how the distribution of all this money, where it goes and how it is controlled. Controlled, we have this IFRS, which is the International Financial Reporting System, which we use and which we gave uh, our information what happened with our money. They have decided to be even more transparent in the future. I'm not there now, but I'm still, I'm still defending FIFA also in cases which are actually in court. Thank you. You'll be comforted to know that our students are coming up with very clear incompatibility rules and rules on conflict of interest. So, in a cert to a certain extent, combating nepotism is uh, something that you can actually uh, solve with rules. Not totally, obviously, because the rest of it is also something that I think you've been discussing. It's a question of culture. And I think that's what the two of you have been addressing. Um, there is a transition, um, and this, uh, this is a bit, of course, it's touchy. I'm very happy that you are ready to be here as a witness, if you want, of, a, of this transition, because it's, it's not easy if you've been living so many decades in that past, and then uh, now you're confronted with um, this um, very, very, and I think correct, deserved emotion. We mind about football and we want to see it in, in good hands. <clears throat> and we are going through that transition. So I would suggest now we've been quite far up the room. Maybe uh, there are some more people further down here. There is, I think, one, one request for the floor here. Um, um, Sarah, please, if you... <clears throat> <laughs> Don't fight over the microphone, Oh, please. no, I'm not going to throw it. <laughs> Nicholas Stingelin, I'm an associate ethicist by profession at the University of Basel. And we've spoken several times about governance and about the Ethics Commission. And my question or point is as much to Mr. Blatt as to Mark Piet and the students. I think we shouldn't forget in this whole debate, we actually have very good models already which we can apply to organizations like, like the FIFA. The old evil pharmaceutical corporations have now been seen as having responsibilities. It's a very important word. You can have responsibilities which are non-causal, okay? The lawyers will know all about this. And I do think the university academic world has a very important role to play, which I'm sure the students have been playing, in giving <coughs> FIFA new models which show them the way industry has been shown, that you have responsibilities because of the power that you have. And that, you know, the leader of such an organization with money and influence cannot say, I don't have responsibility, you do. And we have to get the governance structures in place, which means that this responsibility is taken seriously. As I said, there are many other models. There's the Global Compact there's transnational, and I hope that the students are really looking at this, and there is a way forward working on other precedents. We don't have to completely reinvent the wheel. Thank you, Madam. Um, if, again, we'll, I think we'll take three questions. The gentleman, please. Um, Mr. Platter, Switzerland is probably the home of most international sports organizations. 
I think about 61 organizations have their home in, in Switzerland. It's not only FIFA, it's also the OECD, the IOC, it's the Handball Association and others. Why is Switzerland so popular with those organizations? Second question, the problems you have explained to us, the problems we have seen of FIFA, is that isolated to FIFA or could you imagine that other sports organizations are subject to similar problems but that they just have not come to the surface because they might be smaller, because everybody is now focused on FIFA? Is this a generic problem of international sports organizations? Thank you. Maybe if you allow me to pick up the first question and then hand over to you. Um, of course, you might be astonished that the University of Basel is doing this, and it's actually, I think that was one of your questions, how on earth can you invite somebody who's been leading FIFA for these decades to come and talk here in this forum? Um, of course, university is not just um, an institution that works in the ivory tower. We uh, reach out um, and it's actually essential, it's crucial that we reach out to the town, to the society at large, and discuss with them what we are doing. And this brings me to the topic of governance. Governance is a topic that the university is very much concerned with in various of its, of its compartments, especially also the uh, Basel Institute on Governance, and a specialized institution associated with the uh, university where we've been reforming companies. And I think that's the background of a lot of it. It's evolution. Companies haven't been born with good governance. Some of them have been forced to good governance. Imagine all these companies who've had a corruption problem. You all have heard of Siemens. They had a massive breakdown. They had to pay hundreds of millions of uh, dollars uh, or euros, and they were forced by law enforcement, just in the way as now law enforcement is descending on FIFA, to change. And this um, institution, like other institutions in the world, um, the Basel Institute on Governance, is helping to reform. And for us, this was um, to, to reform FIFA was a logic step. Obviously, it's a different animal. FIFA, sp a sports governing body, a very, I, I only woke up to realize that after we had started working, um, because I had underestimated the sensitivity and also some, maybe the aggression that this kind of institution um, uh, provokes. So I think it is very much in line what we're doing anyhow. And a lot of the things that we have been suggesting to you have happened in, in, uh, the, in business previously. So, um, uh, for instance, uh, CEOs or um, uh, presidents of companies have come around to um, tell the wider public how much they're earning. This has caused a huge problem in Switzerland, of course, where there has been then an outcry. If somebody takes 40 million a year, this is a lot. And um, now we're at a point where the rules are changing. FIFA has accepted that the top pays is going to be um, published. So we have your, an element of, your, of what you've been asking for. I mean, maybe it's not going all the way. So I think this is a bit just to give you an idea why we are doing this. Obviously, I said in the beginning, um, the, the reason why we need um, your contribution is because we have to fully understand what has happened in the last 30 years. That's basically, and I think you've been, been generous with us in that sense. You've, really, you've been openly answering questions and we're not quite finished yet. We still have... Um, I want to answer the second part of the question. Exactly. We have yeah. about 20 minutes more, and we have to... It's your turn now again. I want to answer the second part of your question uh, concerning why it is in football or it is not in the other um, uh, things. First of all, one has to say that, um, that football is... You have to believe it or don't believe it. That is the number one sport in the world when it comes to popularity, definitely. 
And uh, this has also been said by the Mr. Ban Ki-moon in a conference in the IOC, uh, where everybody was waiting that he was speaking about the big Olympic sports, and then he was saying, you can go to every country in the world, you give somebody a ball and he is kicking. Even he should play golf or something else, he's kicking. Well, and wh why football is so important? Foot important. Football, first of all, is entertainment. Entertainment. But then football uh, becomes then also a passion. Football is a passion. And uh, when football is a passion, with emotions, you have no stop and football becomes a drama. It is a drama when it goes to extra time. And it's a tragedy when it goes to the uh, to penalty kicks. It's a tragedy. The football loses its essence 11 against 11. It's one against uh, the, the other. But football with, I repeat, 1.6 billion people directly, indirectly involved in the game, a statistic coming not from FIFA, from international statistics. 1.6 billion people, they are following football. 1.6 billion people. How can you, can you bring them under a head or how can you control them? When they are in emotion, uh, uh, all the fans in football, if you look to the to the uh, uh, head of states when they are in, in a football match, they react exactly like uh, many fans in football. Now, your question, uh, what is in the other sports? Listen, if they are starting to, uh, to, uh, to analyze where they started now, the uh, International Athletics Federation, which is also a very important one, because running everybody in the world can run, so you can even say they, they will have two million people, two billion they are running. Uh, and uh, you have seen what is coming out there, and uh, how, uh, what is still in there. In the, in the other sports, the American sports are out of everything, have you ever heard about the doping controls in the, in the American professional sports? They make doping controls. But they participate on the Olympic Games when they are playing basketball, when they are playing ice hockey. They are coming to the, to the Olympics. And uh, th therefore, I cannot say it is in other sport also. I say, unfortunately, I have to say, we are victims of our popularity. It's easy to say we are victims, but it's a case. And then, now coming back to my personal problem, I personally think when after the, uh, the uh, 30th of, no, 27th of May, with this uh, attack to the five-star hotel in Zurich, uh, I have uh, put my mandate at disposal to, let's say, to go into new um, reforms and to a new election, and once, one month later they suspended me. How could I work then? They cut me out of any work I would have done. Really, I was, I was an outsider. Now I'm an insider here. And if somebody, you told that you are su surprised that I am here. But universities, not only this university, I will be the, in one month, I will be in the University of Bern with uh, the economist in, in Bern. Uh, they asked me to come and to explain what has happened and to see what is it in, because they believe, they believe that something has been done in football in the world, all around the world, perhaps more in the economic side, that's why they asked me to come, than here in the human side. But football is humanity. What has uh, Mandela said? And uh, the, the media, media representative here, you haven't seen that in the stadium in South Africa when it's written, let's celebrate humanity, let's celebrate humanity through football. I, I think we take your word for it that FIFA is an example and has, and uh, most, unluckily most football associations have a real problem. It also raises, of course, questions that go beyond what we're discussing right now. The question whether the host states of such football um, associations shouldn't 
um, take action. It's interesting that quite a lot of countries are now suddenly getting very active. Britain, uh, Spain, um, uh, Germany. I don't know very much about Switzerland, but we'll, we'll see. Um, now, I'm, I don't want to comment any further because I'm, I'm uh, chairing this discussion. We have, let's say, um, and I would like to invite another set of three questions. Maybe um, if uh, anybody a bit further down here has a question, you've been, we've been oh, there's somebody here, yes. Hello. Hello, my name is Marianne Meyer. I'm working for Tier des Hommes. And my question is linked to the contradiction between the FIFA statutes, basically, and reality. For example, there has been an article always on uh, anti-discrimination. It ha has been always already there before the reforms. And explicitly, for example, there is uh, sexual orientation is mentioned there. So how is it possible that then, in terms of homophobia, Volkhov can go to Russia or can go to Qatar when the FIFA status are having this anti-discrimination clause. And we heard what you said about racism. So is there a kind of hierarchy in terms of discrimination mm -hmm. here? Thank you. <laughs> Again, I would propose to take three questions maybe. Number two over here, number three up there. C'est Diallo Alpha de Argao. Je remercie beaucoup l'Université euh, de Bâle pour euh, organiser cette euh, euh, conférence pour que M. Blatter puisse se défendre. Parce que je vois que le monde entier aujourd'hui vous en veut et pourtant vous avez beaucoup œuvré pour le football. Et par exemple, la discrimination dans le football ou bien fair play. J'ai une question. Est-ce qu'il y a quelque chose que vous regrettez pendant votre règne S'il y a quelque chose que vous regrettez, vous dites au public pendant vos règnes. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Merci bien. And the third question was over there. Ja, klar. Ähm, ich würde gerne wissen, Sie machen, FIFA macht ja recht viel Gewinn. Und ich würde gerne wissen, ähm, warum die FIFA praktisch keine Steuern in der Schweiz zahlt und was Sie da dazu denken. Dankeschön. Für This is the question of taxation that has been raised. And the question is, FIFA paying taxes and why not? Um, so you have three questions. The reality... Uh, versus um, yeah, the discrimination issue first, maybe. So, uh, the first question to the lady concerning that we are not following our statutes, but you will also see in our statutes uh, that uh, we are not a political organization and uh, we should uh, not uh, make uh, any differences uh, between the politicians. And uh, are you Swiss? Okay, so as long as uh, the, the Swiss, uh, they are dealing uh, with all countries in the world, they are dealing with the Americas, with the Russians, they are dealing with uh, 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 Chinese and all that, uh, then I think um, uh, football could be, or shall be, what I have said. In this case, football could be a good tool to bring people together. And this uh, handshake for peace, which I have initiated, and which actually is sleeping, but perhaps it is going up again, uh, that uh, we will... Uh, uh, we can play football with uh, this uh, tremendous member of participants. We can also play something, if not for peace, but for a better world. We can contribute to a better understanding. And so far, so far, football is played everywhere in the world, and even women's football is played everywhere in the world. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the next women's football championship under 17 will be played in Jordan, in Jordan. And uh, you will see that uh, it, will be, it will be without any problems 
uh, when uh, women from all around the world, they come together. In the last competition we have had in uh, Azerbaijan, where we had uh, women from another uh, culture, for not saying religion, when they have seen that everybody is playing uh, without a wall, uh, uh, they, they, they took it away and they played normally football as all the others. This is giving rights to the women in countries where they don't have all the same rights. I will have a look on the statutes, perhaps I have changed it during my absence, but I think we are not in the politics. The, the second one, pour répondre à vous, may I answer in English? Oui, parce que français, je ne sais pas si tout le monde comprend le français. Bon. Faites comme vous voulez, alors. Tout le monde comprend le français ici. Mais bien sûr, bien sûr, voilà. Alors, le, le, le collègue, de quel pays vous êtes Guinée. Guinée, Guinée, la Guinée. Bon, euh, il, a, il a dit tout le bien que j'ai fait pour le développement du football, et par, il parle surtout de l'Afrique, naturellement, et puis il me demande si je ne regrette pas quelque chose que j'ai fait. Non, je regrette quelque chose que je n'ai pas fait. This is important. I do not regret what I have not done. Not what I have done. I regret that I have not done enough to bring back FIFA on the right track. This is, je, je regrette. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Je regrette que je n'ai pas re, remis la FIFA sur la bonne voie. I, for, that's it. But I regret rien ce que j'ai fait. Tout ce qui était fait est fait. Et ça sert à rien d'aller dans le passé si c'était bon ou mauvais. But what is important is to say that what's wrong is to not have had enough power, the will was there, power or energy, to bring back FIFA on the right track. Steuern. Steuern. Where is the Steuer specialist? <laughs> yeah. The tax, taxation. Up. Taxation. Yeah. Basel. <laughs> Wir bezahlen Steuern. FIFA bezahlt Steuern. FIFA bezahlt Steuern. Wir bezahlen sogar die Bundessteuer. Und wir bezahlen Steuer. Ja, und im Kanton Zürich. Und wir bezahlen Steuer auf dem Gewinn, das wir jedes Jahr machen. Und das geht in die Beträge ein. 30 bis 40 Millionen Franken pro Jahr bezahlen wir Steuern. Im Gegensatz zu anderen Sportorganisationen, die Steuerfreiheit haben, so long we had benefits gemacht haben, haben wir immer Steuern To be gezogen. frank, it sounds a bit like Starbucks. They're saying, uh, yeah, we pay some taxes, but they have ways of minimizing the taxes. We don't need to pay taxes, we pay taxes. That's wrong. That's wrong, we pay taxes, we don't need to pay taxes. But now they don't pay taxes because the last year I was not there, they are in deficit. <laughs> but that's true. Thank you. Um, Time is advancing very fast. It's true. Um, I would like to, we'll have, I'm reserving a moment for um, my colleague Luis Moreno Campo to pull to the threads together. Um, I would like to just highlight, I think um, it's a general comment, first of all, I think it's extremely helpful what has happened to FIFA to shake up not only FIFA and lots of these issues that you've been raising, including the discrimination topic and the, the human rights topic and so on, would never have really come to the forefront if this shake-up hadn't happened. Obviously, one can ask whether it has, has had to happen the way it did, whether we needed the FBI for that. That's uh, an open question. Now, it does help because it also shakes up the, the entire world of sports governing bodies. So it's not just FIFA, FIFA is an example, is the forerunner. On paper, FIFA looks relatively good in comparison to anybody else. Uh, the, the challenge is to actually get, uh, get the culture changed and to change the mindset in the heads of people. I think you got uh, an acknowledgement by people for a sentence you said a moment ago that you said, um, I regret not having done certain things um, and have not solved all these problems that people are raising. I think that's a very um, interesting comment uh, in, this, uh, in this, uh, the course of these two hours. Now, 
it's, the two hours are nearly over. I actually would like to um, ask you whether you would like to have a, a sort of a final say before we uh, give Luis the floor. Oh. 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uh, thank you. Um, I told you at the very beginning, um, I am, uh, it's not a task for me to be here. It is also for me an opportunity. It was an opportunity. I'm very happy about all the questions uh, you have raised, and uh, this has given me also the opportunity to have a feeling uh, what young people, or not any longer so young people, they are, <laughs> they are feeling in this, uh, in this uh, let's say, what uh, FIFA is in. Bashing FIFA uh, is, was and still is a little bit Bashing FIFA is, uh, uh, is now uh, a la mode. A la mode, it's like uh, the new fashion. Uh, just bashing FIFA, that's good. Uh, now, uh, Gianni is there. <laughs> no, they are bashing Gianni. <laughs> and that's not, that's not correct. It's not, it's not right. He has nothing to do. Because on, on this FIFA he has taken, nothing. It's not, so, it's not the right thing. But anyway, but anyway, I thank you. I thank you that uh, you gave me the opportunity to be with you. And uh, there is something else that is in the world. Allen Menschen recht getan ist eine Tugend, die niemand kann. Und das ist absolut so. And um, I have just to give you a message at the end of uh, my intervention here. Um, consider, consider, please, that every day of your life is a festive life. In this perturbed world, it's very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I think, thank you very much. We're not quite finished. We, I would like to give Luis um, the floor to maybe say something, what your observations are of what we've been doing, please. No, no. <laughs> and you close so, after me? And you close you it. I close? Yeah, yeah, I close after you. you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Mark, for giving me this chance to have a few minutes at the end. Uh, I think we can agree it was a very interesting experience for us. It's part of the seminar. We start the first day interviewing Mark Piet, what he did, why he proposed the reform he proposed, what succeed, what fail. The following day was uh, Domenico Scala, who in fact was part of the reform that Mark Piet proposed, and he explained how he got to keep pushing and new problems. And we finished the seminar with Mr. Blatter, who was the key actor of these years in FIFA. My personal opinion, I would say, my personal opinion, I feel something is, should be clear. It is true, for instance, that all the FBI investigation is not about Mr. Blatter himself. So all the cases are about uh, bribes taken by people in CONCACAF and CONMEBOL, an eventual allegation on South Africa, nothing on him. There are a few cases here in Switzerland, one, the, the payment he did to Mr. Platini, why was justification or not, and also the issue of a conflict of interest that raised it today. So there are two personal issues. The rest is not something specifically about him. And that's why for me it's interesting how we can start to think in more systemic terms, not just what Mr. Blatter did. Because if we're concerned about football, it's FIFA, not Mr. Blatter. But maybe the issue I was thinking, okay, what the real problem with Mr. Blatter as the president of FIFA was that he had nothing to do with CONCACAF and CONMEBOL, but he knew. He had nothing to do with his Secretary General allegation that he was selling tickets. Nothing connected him with the case, but probably he knew. So the problem is his silence. For me, the real problem is he was a manager. He was managing FIFA. The professor of ethics talked about the responsibility. And as the president of FIFA, he had to give the example. So even he was not involved, why he was in silence? And um, or the, he, he, 
I believe he knew, because if he did not know what happened in FIFA, it was, a, it was a bad manager, and he's smart. So probably he knew, and he decided to be in silence. And uh, what I, for me, if I'm Mr. Platter, I would think, OK, was right or was wrong? Because the justification to remain silent is that keeps him managing everyone. Keep managing everyone, keep moving the ball. But at the same time, moving the ball in the wrong direction. Allowing, he said something very interesting today. He said 160 delegations, or more than around 206, I believe, are in, in FIFA, 160, so two thirds, cannot survive without FIFA money. So they are not real associations, they are associations who are, which are starting. <laughs> so controlling that money is crucially important. Allowing these people in Caribe in or in small countries to take in the money is real wrong to start a global football association. So for me, the real question for Mr. Bradley as a manager was the right idea to remain silent was not better if he could denounce and put limits on that. That would be probably what Mr. Infantino should do. Silence is not helping to control corruption. And my... <laughs> So my last word for Mark Pith. I think Mark Pith, I know him for many years, and he's taking risk all the time. All the time, he's, he's always walking on the edge. No? He took different <laughs> jobs, difficult jobs. He was managing the OECD, oil for food, FIFA, risky problems, many times exposed by the media, crucifying him. And today was the last risk he took. No? It was complicated to invite Mr. Blatter to discuss FIFA corruption, and I admire that. I admire that how Marpit not just exposed himself to be criticized, but also he's doing the right things. Because I agree, I like the Marxist comment on well, the problem of FIFA. We agree on that. The issue is how to change that. And I feel the way of Mark is trying to do it, trying to push the ball inside, understanding the game, pushing, the, pushing including other people, like students, is the right way to do it. And I like that very much that Basel University is supporting Marpit to transform this academic exercise into a global brainstorming about how we can transform FIFA to make a never again on corruption in football. Thank you very much, Mark, for that. I only have words of thanks myself, and first of all, I would like to start with you. Uh, it's been a very, I think, relevant uh, moment, uh, this, these two hours. It's been sometimes uh, intense, and I, I like the way you put the, your questions, very relevant, very direct. And on the other hand, I would like to also thank Mr. Blatter for having um, born with us, having uh, submitted to this kind of grilling. Um, yes, and uh, also for his openness. Sometimes you've been saying things that um, have been probably more difficult to say as the uh, president you were. Um, I would like to thank the students very much for this work that you've been spending day and night on, coming up with, with this very tangible result. Uh, the, we will see what we're going to do with it, but, or what you are going to do with it, and see whether Gianni Infantino has a moment for you when you want to see him with the document you have prepared. Um, let me thank, of course, Luis for simply coming here, spending a week with uh, students, um, engaging students, being in his direct way, I think um, you have been able to learn an amazing amount in, that, in this week, especially from the way he approaches things. Um, last but not least, I would like to thank very much uh, the media department of the university for their work, also the services of our hosts here, of the, um, the hospitals of Basel, 
and of course, um, uh, my, uh, the doctoral students who are working with me as so-called assistants in uh, the way we, 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 we call them, especially uh, Catherine and Stefan, who've been the organizers of uh, the week. And with this, thank you very much and goodbye.